Hey, my name is Skip Kelly and I teach superstars around the world in the personal development space how to be more compelling on camera, in person, on stage, so that they can continue to transform the world bigger and better. So here's the slide that was the most popular one this year while I was teaching my workshops that I wanna run through with you and show you in person. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of tell you a bit of my life story as I go through these various on-camera skills that are very applicable in person about being charismatic and interesting, whether it's in short form or long form content, whether you're on stage speaking or whether you're just in person, potentially in a sales conversation or even just trying to get your romantic partner to understand you. All of these skills are incredibly valuable, but I don't want you to be pressured into getting all of them right now and that's why I've made this video so you can come back to it regularly and practice each of these skills in your own way I recommend doing each skill about two weeks at a time so for this first skill figuring out your North Star of the conversation of whatever it is is the most important one by far and so let's paint the picture what is a North Star it's the intention, it's the reason for doing what you're doing, the conversation that you're having, the video you're making. I'll give you an example. My North Star right now is for this video to inspire one million people how to be more persuasive and charismatic on camera to make sure that good messages get out into the world in a more prolific way. So I hope that something in you sparks along this video, some skill that you gain makes you so compelling and so amazing that the incredible story you have to share, the incredible content that you're gonna generate for the rest of your life is even better and more people are impacted by it. And that's why I help superstars in this space in particular around the world. So what's your North Star in this video? What expectation could you set for yourself that you're gonna gain about becoming more persuasive or more interesting on camera? So that's number one. Now the second most important thing about specifically doing media or being on stage is that you need to help somebody right now. So for this video, I am literally teaching you how to be more persuasive and more compelling on camera or in person. I'm gonna help you by teaching you these various things. So make sure that whatever you're doing, whether it's speaking or on camera, that it's very helpful right now. So the next thing about being compelling is making your content shorter. If you have a really big message to tell, make sure that you can shorten it and get the most effective words, the most important words to be first so that you can give context if they ask, but you get your point across quickly. I'll give you an example. Something that's really helpful with this is skill number four, which is pausing after every single statement. And that's for two reasons. Using silence well is later down on the list, and that's a beautiful thing. If you say something absolutely incredible, you've probably heard yourself in conversation with a friend or a family member or with a coworker inspiring someone where you said something so profound and you could tell that fireworks were exploding in their head, and then you just kind of ran through that moment. And later you went, oh, I should have like let that sink in. Or maybe you've had a mentor do this to you where they said something super profound that blew your mind and then they just kept moving and you had to like slow them down because it was such a powerful statement for you. In addition to when you're talking on camera, when you're talking on stage, if you can pause after each statement and you get a chance to edit that content, you can edit it better when there's pauses where if I just keep running through every single sentence, I'll never be able to actually cut it and make it more appealing which comes with the next one, which is matching your energy after a pause. So if I'm gonna tell you a story like, when I was 18 years old, I got hired by a motivational speaker to be his right-hand man. And then before I knew it, I was, you see how I picked up the energy after the pause? And so if I edit those together, when I was 18 years old, I got hired by a motivational speaker to be his right-hand man. And then before I knew it, I was, it sounds really strange. So you have to note what was the energy right after you ended that and then match that when you come back in so that if you do edit together, it sounds normal and not funky. The next one is just breathe. So whenever you're about to make a statement, whenever you're about to do a piece of content, just breathe. Oh, relax. And just know that making content is about reps, being charismatic, being persuasive, developing these skills is about doing a lot of reps. You don't go to the gym and overnight get a six pack. You don't get the body of your dreams overnight. You get it after years of doing things consistently well. And discipline is so important when it comes to gaining skills in life. And that's no different here. Breathe, relax, 
you will get better every time. Do it with intention. Do the thing, do the speech, do the piece of content, watch yourself, punch yourself in your throat a little bit. I did that for 10 years of doing content. Could barely stand to watch myself on camera, but you get better and better by doing it. Then number seven, use your body. So when in doubt, if you find that you're dry, you're monotone on camera, start using your body more. And the more you move around, it will start to change your voice. By doing those movements, it will actually create inflections and tone shifts in your voice, which just makes you sound better just by moving your body. Enunciate all of your words. So when you're on camera, you'll notice you're probably mumbling a little bit more, or maybe you're the opposite side of the spectrum where you're super loud. Just make sure to enunciate all of your words. Try not to eat them. And when you enunciate them better, you'll sound a little bit more proper. And then of course, over time, you'll tone it down a little bit. The pendulum will swing, and then you'll find the rhythm of what kind of sounds good for you and your style. The next one, when you're saying something, like you're telling a story, if you speed it up occasionally and you talk a little bit faster, and then you begin to slow down as you talk. You can begin to emphasize certain points or trigger the brain speed of the people that are watching to follow you even faster. And so you see what happens is when I speed up my words and you're following along with that sentence and then I slow down my words, there's a different sort of energy that you get watching me or talking with me as I do those different paces. And so that's another thing you can start to say where if I'm reciting data or if I'm trying to do something important, I can speed it up for the data, slow it down for the important line. And then the next thing, if your body isn't enough, you can start to change your tone or change your pitch depending on the thing that you're trying to get across. Obviously the better quality microphone like I have up here helps a lot because you can actually hear the differences in my tone and pitch. Start to use your face and emotions. So you're using your body, you're changing your tone and your pitch. There's a high likelihood that your face is moving, but if it's not and you're that creeper terminator on camera, you can start to use your face in interesting ways and you can start to throw in little things. Most of the time, if you see really high level actors, they're always asymmetrical. They're almost never direct to camera unless you're Wes Anderson and you're being directed by him. But most of the time, there's an asymmetry to it, which is gonna be further down the list as well. But start to use your face and start to be interesting when you're talking to someone and start to notice when you're talking with your friends casually how your face is when you're around the people you're most comfortable with probably your significant other unless that relationship's going out the door you're going to notice that you're way more animated and interesting and start to maybe even film on the background just to see what you're like when you're talking with people you're comfortable with to start to bring that into your more professional conversations or on camera. Then try to start using stories to tell the same super valuable information with all these other things in mind. Let's pick a story for you guys. About seven months ago, I had been running this supplement company for a long time and people had offered to sort of buy me out of the company for a while, but there was a deep sense of unworthiness in that whole idea of being able to sell a company and sell something that Really, I had been building for so long, I didn't know if anyone else could really take it and run with it, but I, I don't know, for some reason, it felt weird to accept a large sum of money to be able to sell that company. So it felt like too good to be true, right? And so it took me about two years to come to grips with this, doing all my worthiness practices, doing meditations and abundance, attraction, hypnosis and meditation until finally I just asked for what I wanted because I, I really did want to sell it and I really did want to move on energetically from running that company but it literally took two years of growth and evolution of going through the dark night of the soul, getting completely abandoned in a relationship and going through you know, fetal position, crying on the floor. It took all of that. It took that woman even telling me that I clearly had a worthiness issue in business and in money for me to finally be moving this boulder of worthiness for myself to get to the point where then in three months, I sold the company. And a month after that, I started a huge new adventure and had equity in a major company I've always wanted to work with. And then it was just one thing after another, the barriers kept coming down. And so what that meant to me is, I could have accepted that so much sooner. And it was perfect the way it worked out. And I learned all the things I needed to along the way, but the message to you is just ask for what you want. And when you ask for it, you give people the opportunity to just say yes. And maybe they'll say no, don't be attached to them saying yes, but ask for what you want. Even if it's as simple as, sweetie, can you bring me some paper towels to blow my nose when I'm sick? And they're probably excited to say yes. I know all the time when I offer to pay for someone's coffee, I'm really enthusiastic about it. And when they say no, I'm a little hurt. I wanna provide for them, I wanna help. 
And I was, I was that person that would say no all the time to these gifts, to this generosity of others. And now I'm more and more open to it. Just the other day, someone offered to pay for my dinner and my girlfriends, and immediately I said no, and then I went, wait, breathe, yes, yes, that'd be so generous of you, and that's so kind of you, and I would love to do that for someone else, so I'm gonna let you do that for me, and it was a beautiful thing. So start to use your stories to describe the things that you wanna teach. And then we go to the be asymmetrical. So if you notice with my hands throughout all of this, very rarely am I using two hands at the same time in the same gesture. So if you rewind five minutes, you start watching me talk, you'll notice one hand is higher or lower, one hand is forward or backward, and it's a little bit trickier, but once you get it, it's very powerful to be asymmetrical because then if ever you use both hands at the same time, it's so unordinary. And you'll see the best orders of all time do that. Go look at Barack Obama, go look at, I mean, even Stalin and Hitler, as bad as people as they were, they were very good orators. Bill Clinton is another one that was infamous for being so good at speaking. I think I might be using that word inappropriately. He was famous for being good at speaking. And then then when you start doing your stories, you start doing your value, start to move your message around. Quentin Tarantino is so famous for this, where he'll take the mid part or the climax of the story and put it right at the beginning. And so start to look at your stories and say, how could I weave them around? How could I change the positioning of it to be most interesting to the person that's watching? So short form content, right? That first five seconds has got to be fire. And then long form content, still the first five seconds has to be fire. But in a speech, you have to say, What's the most important thing that they hear first so that they continue to go along? And so on YouTube, we always start with something really exciting, kind of giving you a preface to what's gonna happen, and then we go into the context, and then we go into the meat of it. So just think for yourself, what's the most important thing to start with? Use silence tastefully. Like I said earlier with the pauses, the pauses are so that you can edit it together and make it better and better over time with the right energy matching, right? Using silence tastefully is about making powerful statements and then letting them rest as long as they need to for the point to really sink in and get across. Now, use your eyes intentionally. If I'm telling a sad story, like the story earlier of being in the fetal position on the ground crying in my dark night of the soul after that really tough breakup for me, I could say it like that or I could say, like that story earlier where I was on the fetal position on the ground, just sobbing uncontrollably for about four weeks in a row. I remember I got into this hotel room in Albuquerque, New Mexico, just a few days afterwards, and I collapsed onto the ground in that hotel room, literally just sobbing. And I know a lot of us have experienced something like this. And after that experience, I am so much more understanding and empathetic for people that are going through really anything in life. I've dealt with death. Death was challenging, but this type of experience where there were three kids involved in the breakup was a totally new level of empathy for other people and how heartbroken I was. So you see, I use my eyes and I look away. And that's the truth of it, to emphasize what's happening. But I, you have to do it strategically. Don't look away too long, because it does get maybe a little weird depending on the story. And then finally, make your content longer. Once you've mastered making it shorter, getting the point across in a quick point of time, then see, can I add context? Can I add more story? Can I add more flavor to it? Can I make it longer and still keep it interesting using all of these skills? That's it for today's lesson, everybody. My name is Skip Kelly. My goal is to inspire the whole world through media, through speeches, through communication, and to help you activate your highest self, to really live a beautiful, inspired life while making a ton of money. And so that is my goal. The top three things in, in life are health, wealth, and self-love. I'm gonna teach you how to do those three things. I'll see you in the next video.